The most frequently ordered diagnostic exam that is performed by a radiographer is by far the chest x-ray. Typically, the most common chest x-ray has two projections. The first is the PA projection, which is seen here. You like to use a 14 by 17 inch cassette for all PA chest x-rays of an adult. For adolescents and pediatrics, you may choose the cassette size according to their body size. For chest x-rays, the SID is always a minimum of 72 inches. We recommend this to decrease magnification of the heart and increase the recorded detail of the thoracic structures. If possible, always examine patients in the upright position for a chest x-ray, either standing or seated. This will place the diaphragm at its lowest position and air or fluid levels will be seen. Also, engorgement of the pulmonary vessels is avoided. For positioning, place them with arms hanging at their sides and their chest against an upright vertical device. Adjust the height of the IR so that the upper border is one and a half to two inches above the relaxed shoulders. Center the mid-sagittal plane of the patient's body to the midline of the IR. Have the patient stand up straight with the weight of the body equally distributed on the feet. Extend the patient's chin upward. Ask the patient to flex the elbows and rest the backs of the hands low on the hips. Rotate the shoulders forward so that they touch the vertical grid device. This movement will rotate the scapula outward and laterally and remove them from the lungs. The central ray should be directed perpendicular to the IR. It should also enter the level of T7, which can also be found by palpating the inferior angle of the scapula. The respiration phase for a chest x-ray is on full inspiration at the end of the second respiration. So, instruct the patient to take a deep breath in, blow their breath all the way out, and take another deep breath in and hold their breath. This will ensure maximum expansion of the lungs. The PA projection of the thoracic viscera shows the air fluid trachea, the lungs, the diaphragmatic domes, the heart and aortic knob, and if enlarged laterally, the thymus or thyroid gland. Be sure to review your anatomy so you can recognize all the structures that should be clearly shown. In addition to the evidence of proper collimation, the entire lung fields from the apice to the costophrenic angles should be visualized. There should be no rotation. This can be seen by looking at the sternal ends of the clavicles, in which they should be equidistant from the vertebral column. The trachea should be visible at the midline. Scapula should be projected to the outsides of the lung fields. Ten posterior ribs should be visible above the diaphragm. Sharp outlines of the heart and the diaphragm should also be visualized. Typically, a faint shadow of the ribs and the superior thoracic vertebra should be visible through the heart shadow. Finally, lung markings should be visible from the hilum to the periphery of the lung. This image demonstrates the 10th posterior rib being shown in this x-ray. He should practice counting ribs. Sometimes, a female patient's breasts are large enough to be superimposed over the lower part of the lung fields, especially the costophrenic angles. If this is the case, ask the patient to pull the breasts upward and laterally. This is especially important when ruling out the presence of fluid. Have the patients hold the breasts in place by leaning against the IR. In the image at the top, the breasts are superimposed over the lower lungs, which is incorrect. Looking at the image below, the same patient, the breasts have been moved upward and laterally. You can now visualize the costophrenic angles, which is shown with the arrows at the bottoms of the screen.